Good afternoon, welcome along to this dig main barrier out digging. He's in a hole over there, you may just see the ash coming up. I've just got here and I'm squaring out my hole. I've got a wee bit of fresh in here, it's not too particularly great layered, but I'm going to widen this hole and have a good go at it this morning. I've not found it as of yet, but when I do, I'll get back to you guys in the first hit. Well, starting to disappear now, like on this dig. <laughs> I did get this, I've no idea what it was It's broken anyway, but yeah Any of you guys know what it is? Let us know I don't know if it's a spittoon or something like that maybe Possibility there And this little beauty You don't see many of these, that's what I like about them Poisonous, not to be taken Sheer lip I'm just getting down to like a really good layer of seams Nice orange bits and that, so hopefully this is where I'm going to get some nice bits We was just talking to Barry about this five minutes ago, I says we were talking about the blue poisons and how they're a bit scarce And I says there's a coffee shaped poison that's aqua That's really scarce and lo and behold One has just come up <laughs> Not to be taken Ribbed coffee shaped poison bottle And these are quite rare Nice actually can't believe that There you go, beautiful little poison bottle Well there we go, next one out is a Binan Liquid Malt Amber Allen and Hanbury's Nice eh? Beautiful little amber medicine bottle no doubt There we go, another two finds, look at that lovely stoneware ink I like that just the way it's The neck is like that eh? Very nice. I love the neck on that. Nice ink well. And of course we have a rare poison from Young and Co Glasgow. Quite a scarce poison. Should be Young and Co. Yep, Young and Co Glasgow. And that'll be a blue poison bottle. Bit hard to see. But that is a broad blue poison bottle. Well I do like my salt glazed ink wells. Check that one out. It's a beautiful mini brown one about three or four different variations I've got to this now Nice! Possibly a monk's wine in there or a beer I'm not quite sure what it is but it could well be just a monk's wine It's hard to see like eh? Yeah like I said Benedictine Benedictine monk's wine that's not coming with me it's staying it's common as muck I've got some seams in there well, one thing's for sure, there's definitely ginger beers in this tip. Look at that, our bar, Robert Bar. Ginger beer, that's the early one. Iron Brew bottle. I say Iron Brew now, but yeah. Also got a bit of a glass, it's pretty ironic. <laughs> for the time of year it is. And Ashley says Merry Christmas. Crimson, griddled, made with braided flax and stands. And a little, I think it's door something, whenever it's fair. Actually, right here, that's better. Just to show you the glass, it does say Merry Christmas on it. <laughs> it's ironic because it's this time of year, eh? Into December. And you get a nice Christmas mug. Merry Christmas! Well, there's plenty of sheer lip stuff here anyway, so it's early enough Look at that, a little washer, lead washer <laughs> It's amazing, you miss stuff, you miss so much stuff that you throw out in these tips, it's unbelievable But those are early bottles and I'm going to pop over now and see how bad he's getting on I've not had a great day, but I've had a few nice bits, so I'm happy with that and we'll pop open and see what Barry's getting Well, Barry's threw that up, that's a blue Woodward's Chemist bottle Nice, little Woodward's Chemist in blue, Nottingham Very nice There you go, another bottle out by Barry, not to be taken It's a little two ounce poison bottle, he's down there chomping away in his hole that's a beautiful little poison uh, Hexagonal or octagonal poison bottle Green, nice But two ounces There you go, lovely 
the succular blue ink sheer lip nice we were getting the square ones at Pumperson the other day but these are nice ones eh sheer lip blue inks Harry's down there he's got some other bits and bobs he says he's got to throw up and show me in a wee minute well Barry's got a lovely square lip ink look at that eh that's kind of the gear you would find at Pumperston again beautiful I love the little stamp on that eh it reminds me of the Bellarmine jugs square lip ink gorgeous it's one of the bigger sizes probably about 10 20 ounces well Barry's just thrown out this and this is a beautiful little buttercups fortunately it has no print on it and but they are buttercups they're a nice find eh finding them is uh, pretty rare with any print on them if you do get them with the print on them in a mini size apparently they're worth quite a lot of money that was the lid I got earlier I thought you had dancer and then I turned it over nothing beautiful brown stoneware ink and Barry's just tossed out another ginger that's broken it shows you there's plenty of gingers about here there's got to be some nice printed ones eh well here we go our Gordon and Drummond pharmacist Falkirk all the geese are coming in for the winter But that's a beautiful little chemist bottle, our Gordon and Drummond Pharmacist Falkirk Beauty! <laughs> that would have been a nice bottle, eh? Necks off it. Bottled by Nielsen Brothers in it. West Calder. Would have been a nice beer. Today we're going to tell you the story of Andrew Ewing of the Buttercup Dairy. It's a sort of rags to riches story. Born in Stony Kirk near Stonrar in 1869, Andrew was the son of a farmer. In normal course of events, he would likely have become a farmer himself. However, fate had other ideas for young Andrew. Following his early father's death, the family moved to Dundee. He was apprenticed a local grocer and beginning a lifelong career in the grocery trade. In 1894, he opened his first grocery shop. Ten years later, founded the Buttercup Dairy Company in Kirkcaldy. The first buttercup shops in Edinburgh were 1908 and 1915. The company established its permanent head office in Easter Road in Leaf. Established, Andrew began developing a distinctive style and image for his shop. All his staff were female and there was a high standard of cleanliness in the shops. In the early days of the buttercup shop sold only seven products, eggs, butter, margarine, cream, tea, cooking fat and condensed milk, although later expanded to many more goods. Butter and margarine were sold by weight and by butter pats used to shape it into its final form, which was then stamped with the girl and the cow logo wrapped in the buttercup paper. For the first 18 years of its existence, the Buttercup Dairy imported most of its eggs from Denmark and Poland. However, Andrew believes that he could produce a better and fresher product by setting up his own large-scale poultry farm. His plan became to fruition in 1922 when he purchased 86 layers of farmland at the top of Kostofrine Hill on the western outskirts of Edinburgh. Initially, it was a fairly modest enterprise with 10,000 laying hens. By 1928, Andrew had transformed it into one of the largest poultry farms in the world for 200,000 laying hens. The farm itself was laid out like a small town, six and a half miles of Tarmacavdom roadways illuminated at night by streetlights so impressive the new enterprise was called and known locally as the Hen City. At the heart of the Buttercup Poultry Farm stood Andrew's mansion at Clermiston Mains, the home of Andrew Ewing, also known as the Big House. Andrew was well known for his generosity, as many a family would find out. Such generosity during the 1930s of the Great Depression a person found a small packet slipped into their pocket containing half a pound of butter and the rashers of bacon. The beginning of the end of the Buttercup Dairy started in the early 1930s. 
As competition intensified, the company was milked by Andrew for his continued generosity. Then in 1936, a major fire in the poultry farm destroyed the hatchery and caused the farm to close for two years. By that time, Andrew was nearly 70 and didn't, and didn't have the heart to restore it. By 1949, the business was in such poor shape that many of the shops had to be sold off, but it survived for much longer. And the last Buttercup Dairy Shop closed in Edinburgh in 1965. Sadly, Andrew Ewing died in 19. 56 and was largely forgotten. However, these days in Edinburgh there is a park built on the old farm. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the story. It's just a little bit of history of the remarkable story of Andrew Ewing and the Buttercup Dairy. So on that note, guys, I'm going to call it a day for this video and please like, share and of course don't forget to check out the Etsy shop which will be in the messages down below and there'll be a link in the description as well. So thank you very much for watching. Please like and subscribe and I'll catch you guys in another video very shortly. Bye for now.